I want to say it took courage for Charles Fox to come up here. It is hard to get a scientist to speak out against the Ark Encounter. Because Ken Ham goes after them and tries to get them fired on occasion. Or tries to defund their program. We need more science to speak out. So I want to give Charles one more big round of applause. If you don't think the Ark Encounter should get $18 million in sales tax incentives while discriminating, there is a petition at the Louisville Freethinkers Tent. Make sure you visit them before the end of the day. Yep. Our next speaker is John Loftus, author, former pastor, and just an amazing individual. Give him a big round of applause. You know, it's a real sad day when a scientist has to come out and say, hey, Ken Ham, even though he's got this stupid Ark Encounter located in my state, he doesn't speak for me, he doesn't speak for scientists, he doesn't speak for the universities in Kentucky. Nice job, nice job. Give another round of applause. See, because Ken Ham believes in a God who doesn't know anything about science. <laughs> he's the creator of the universe, get this, who doesn't know anything about the universe. So it's Ken Ham versus science. And to, uh, to side with Ken Ham is to be basically raised to believe somehow in some, um, some fundamentalist Christian home that Ken Ham is right. And we're calling that bullshit today. Bullshit. This is a shrine to Ken Ham's stupidity. The Ark Encounter is a shrine to stupidity because if you believe the flood tales, then the earth is flat. The earth isn't flat, so you shouldn't believe the flood tales. In fact, if you believe the flood tales, I have no better word to describe except you're stupid. You're stupid. I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, um, but that's the best word. I thought of using the word madness, idiocy, lunacy, ignorance, or even informationally challenged people, which are all true as well, but I landed on the term stupidity. Stupid. No educated person in the modern world thinks Noah's Ark story is true. And one of the reasons I want to tell you today is because if you think it's true, then the earth is flat. <laughs> so I want you to help me with, uh, if you would. I want you all to yell out if you would, stupid. Stupid. You're good. One more time louder. Stupid. What is Ken Ham? Stupid. What, are those, what do you describe those who approved and supported this shrine? Stupid. What about the people who could have stopped it but didn't? Stupid. What about the people who continue voting for the elected officials who approved this shrine? Stupid. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. If you if you don't like the word stupid, you could use ignorance or informational challenge, but I think that would be a little bit harder to stick in there because I'm not giving you enough time to do that. Uh, what do you call people who, who uh, fail to realize that this is a for-profit enterprise? Stupid. What? Stupid. What? What do you call people who rejected the, uh, the, the separation of church and state and did it anyway? Stupid. What do you call people who didn't realize that only Christians would be hired there? Stupid. Again, this is a shrine to stupidity. And one of the reasons is because if you believe the tales that are told inside those, inside the ark, then you must believe in the flat earth as well. Think of this this way. The creation story, Genesis 1, has the universe created after the earth. First the earth was created, then the earth, or then the, then the universe of stars, the sun, moon, and, uh, and stars. What do you call that? Stupid. If you believe that God knew nothing about science, not, not at all, even though he supposedly is the creator of it all. The ancient Hebrews imagined the, the world as flat and covered by uh, the great solid dome of the firmament, which was held up by mountain pillars. The blue color of the sky was attributed to the chaotic waters that the firmament separated from the earth. The earth was thus surrounded by waters above and below. That's what the Bible teaches. The firmament was thought to be substantial. It had pillars that supported it from the earth and foundations. When the windows of it were opened, rain fell. That's what happened, of course, in the story of the flood, that uh, the windows of heaven opened and like God up there and his angels were just, oh, give me another bucket. Let's go throw some more down on them. Um, it was an abode of the birds. See, the birds flew next to the stars, according to the Bible. 
Um, you can look at that in Genesis 120 and Deuteronomy 417 because I'm pretty sure you want to look that up. And within, within the earth, there was uh, the grave. The grave was located where? Down there. That's where you go when you die, down there. So based on these facts, the literal theory has no basis to stand on. Even some Christian scholars are saying this, something like this. A young earth could never have borne the vegetative mass necessary to create the deposits of coal. And again, there are 600 meters of stratification in the Yellowstone Park, which reveal 18 forests which were covered over by lava one after another, each successive layer which engulfed its predecessor. And there was not enough time in a young earth for that to take place. Now, some uh, Ken Ham supporters would say, well, God can do anything. God could have done all of this, even though it's impossible according to science. Uh, well, then, what they don't think of is what other things God could do. If he's upset with the earth and he wants to, like, destroy a certain amount of people, then what he does, what he could have done, what a smart God could have done, is simply reduce their mating cycles. And over a generation of time, babies are, not enough babies are being born to the evil people, so that after a generation, or maybe two, then all of a sudden all the people are gone, and all you have are the eight, you know, good, righteous people, plus their children. Uh, well, well, what if the, the answer, answer it goes like this? Well, no, God wanted to sign. He wanted to uh, make a big show of his power. Well, um, a, a sign isn't a sign unless there's evidence for it. <laughs> this is not a sign to God. This is a sign to... Thanks for helping me out. I, I probably should include you in on that. All right, let me just read to you the Bible. It's Bible lesson time. Those of you who brought your Bibles... I want you to turn to Job chapter 22, verse 14. These are my preacher days, you know. I just, you know, hold your Bible. I would do this. I would say, hold your Bibles up, you know, just to get them in their hands, to make sure that they, uh, they have them. Job 22, 14. Listen to this. Thick clouds veil him, so he does not see, so he does not see us as he walks about the vault of heaven. Again, Job 22, 14. Thick clouds veil him, so he does not see us as he walks about the vault of heaven. God was hiding himself from their, from view. He didn't want to see him. What, what was he doing? Well, he's allowing the clouds to hide him so that he can walk upon the vault of the heaven above. That's the kind of uh, universe that Ken Ham has to believe in. Another one, Job chapter 37, verse 18. Can you join him in spreading out the skies hard as a mirror of cast bronze? See, the skies, according to the Bible, were cast bronze. That's called the firmament. That's where the, the sun, moon, and stars were, uh, were um, swinging back and forth and where the rain was held back. Uh, then in, in Daniel chapter 4, verse 11, in a dream, uh, we read that the, tr the tree that he was dreaming about grew large and strong, and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Now, about that passage is that... There, there's no possible way a tree could touch the sky. It's, it's saying that there's something up there that it can be touched. And it says, if you were up that high, you could see the ends of the earth. That bespeaks of a flat earth. Um, and here's, I, I want to skip to a good one. I like, I'm sorry. I see the timekeeper coming. Um, in Isaiah 24, verse 1, it says, The earth is turned upside down to scatter its inhabitants. Now, that's, of course, God is upset with them, right? What does he do when he's upset? He turns the earth upside down and scatters its inhabitants. That's a flat earth. Um, and um, when when Jesus uh, comes back, he's supposed to be seen by everybody as a flat earth. When... Um, he was on the pinnacle of the uh, temple. He could see all the king kingdoms of the world. He can't do that if there's a round earth. If you believe the flood tale, then you must believe the flat earth. And anybody who believes the flat earth is... Yeah. So anybody who believes the flood story is... Yeah. Thank you.